Today I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly and easily create new variations from your original document. This will include converting to a different size, updating styles, colors, and graphics, and moving pages around. I will also talk a little bit about image links and how to fix any issues you might come across. This is going to be a short video, but a very valuable video today, I promise you. Let's get into it. So first things first, I want to mention whenever you're going to make changes to your document or creating new variations, I would always save the original document as a new document. Okay. You want to keep your original there in case you run into any issues. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is updating links, because if you have an older document, something you've created a few months ago, um, a few years ago, whatever the case may be, it is possible that some files had been moved around and I will explain first why this would happen uh, and what the difference is between the types of images embedded and linked. And then I'll show you how to fix it. So let me show you what happens. I had moved the files um, for the graphics that I had added to the doggy planner so that I can show you what will happen if you go into a document and some links are missing. So immediately, as soon as I try to go into the document, it's going to tell me I have 75 links that are missing or broken. Um, I'm going to say okay for right now. So you'll see that all my little guys here, they have little red circles with question marks in them sh telling me, Hey, these links are broken. Let me first start with explaining the difference between an embedded image and a linked image. So embedded images are images that are added through copy and paste method. Okay. So if you copied something from somewhere else and then just paste it into your document, that will be an embedded image. These images are full images. So they're going to be high resolution. They're going to have all of the assets, all the information for that image is going to be embedded right onto your planner. Um, it definitely has an advantage. The obvious advantage is that you don't have to worry about broken links or keeping track of your files, but there are some major disadvantages. Embedding images causes it to be a much larger file size. Okay. Your whole document will be a much larger file size, which will definitely, especially as you're adding pages, slow down the document. It will slow down the system. One more disadvantage is that you won't be able to easily change them out later. And, uh, you'll need to manually, if I wanted to change this guy out, I would have to manually add another image and then resize it. And if it's in a frame or something like that and reformat it, this will make more sense later when I show you how to, uh, to change out images later in the video. Um, okay. So now linked images. So linked images are basically the opposite. So linked images are the images that you're adding through places. What I've been doing for the entire um, series, I come to place and that's how I place the image that's going to create a linked image. And what this means is that, that you're seeing as kind of a placeholder and design is using it as a placeholder. It does not contain all of the information of the image. That's why it looks low resolution. InDesign will attach, will grab from that file and attach it to your document when you're exporting it. So the exported document, whether it be print or PDF, um, the exported document will have all that information. But while you're working in it, you're only going to see that low res image. And that has obvious advantages to keep your file size much smaller so that you don't experience as much lag with the system. I mean, if you have lots and lots of pages, it's going to happen eventually. The bigger the file, the more, um, the slower it's going to get for the, your computer, your computer plays a big role in it. It's not necessarily in design, um, but it will slow down your computer and in design. And then another advantage is that you can relink it later, um, with a different image. And again, I will show this later in the video. And so the obvious disadvantage is that if you move your graphic files around, um, maybe you delete them or maybe you're cleaning up your computer. So you move them from one folder to another, um, that's going to create some missing or broken links and you will have to relink them. So that's a disadvantage of course. So you will need to be careful about moving around files that are linked to your document. So my suggestion and what I like to do is I create a folder that I keep my document in and I also keep copies of any of my graphics 
in that folder as well. I create copies because maybe I want to use those graphics somewhere else in, you know, I don't know, designing my listing photos. Maybe I want to create some stickers or something else, or maybe I want it to use them in a totally different project. If that's the case that you think you might want to use them somewhere else, I would make copies that way. Those that you're using for this document stay in a folder by itself, and then you can do what you want with the other, with the originals or, you know, the copies. And, um, but if you're only planning on using them in this document, you don't really have to use a copy, but either way, I would definitely keep everything in a folder together so that you are not, you are way less likely to move things. Relinking is not that difficult unless you've deleted something, so it's not a huge deal, but you definitely wanna keep your computer moving as fast as possible because um, it's a real time waster if it starts to get lag. Also note, and I mentioned this briefly before, that if you export as a PDF, you will not need to worry about these links. The PDF will have the information embedded on it, and so, um, and it'll be your high resolution graphics, and there's no need to worry there. I recommend keeping images linked. However, if you decide that you want to unlink them by embedding them, you can do so at any time. And I am going to show you how to do that. But first, I want to show you how to fix these broken links because I won't be able to embed this guy until I fix the broken link. So there's two ways you can do this. You can just simply click on the little question mark here and then... Um, is it automatic? Okay, here we I have a box here. So when you click on that... It will bring this up. If it doesn't bring this up automatically, just click relink image there and it will bring it up. And then you can simply find, I already have mine set up here, um, but find wherever you moved your images to and you want to find your original image. Here he is. You're just going to choose it, select him and then say open. And then it's just going to relink it, right? It doesn't change anything um, for your image. It's just going to relink it. And now you see you have this little chain link here. The other way that you can fix links, which is gonna be much quicker if you have a lot missing, um, is you're gonna to wanna to use the links panel, which you should see, I think, if you're using Essential Classics like I am, this is automatically here. But if not, just come to Windows and then come down to Links and then open the panel there. And now, if we go ahead and we click well, I'm just scrolling to the top, but if you click this here, it's going to move um, just like the hyperlinks. If you click here, it's going to move everything up to the top. So to relink from here, you just select it and then right click and then relink. And you can relink all instances of that particular graphic from here, or you can double click on this little question mark here to just update the one. You'll see this has a drop down. So basically that's showing you this little, when you see the little arrow here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's indicating that there are mo multiple of this instances of this one graphic. So if you click to toggle that down, um, you'll see it'll show all the different places and you can always click on the page to go to those places as well if you want to. So if you wanted to just uh, update one of the, these, you can just um, right click on, on the one underneath. It's kind of like a group, right? Um, so you and then right click and then say relink. But if you want to do all of them, which is, you know, usually what you would want to do, I think, um, then you can right click on the top of the group and then relink all instances and then it'll be the same you're going to go and find your graphic that you want to replace it with so now that i have this guy fixed let's show you how you can go ahead if you say maybe you're at the end of your document and you're like i don't want to have to worry about this or deal with this so i'm going to embed all of these guys before i save it to embed him all you need to do is i would just click on him and then when you click on him, it's going to highlight him over here in the links panel. Now you're going to come over to the links panel, right click, and then say embed link. And once you've done that, he's now embedded and um, you don't have to worry about missing any links or moving the files around. You're also going to see this little icon here next to him. Okay, that is all I'm going to talk about right now for links. Let's talk about changing your document size and or margins because 
this is a big one, especially for anybody making printable planners, because usually you're going to want to offer various sizes for to fit all of your customer needs, right? So typically when you go on and you find printable planners, they're going to have A5, they're going to have letter, maybe they have happy planner, which is like seven by nine and a quarter. So you're going to want different sizes when you don't want to have to recreate all of these different documents that would take a long time. So once you've created your first document, um, you can then simply resize the um, new document. And let's go ahead and add some, I'm just going to insert some random pages here so that I can show you how this will, how this will work. Let's do, let's do the year at a glance. That's fine. Okay. All right. So we're looking at our document here. This one was set up as seven by nine. Um, so in order to change the size, you're going to come up to file and you're going to come down to document setup. Okay. Now here it was where we can make some changes. Um, you can make changes to any of these basic document setup. Um, but mainly I'm going to focus on you're changing your size and or you're changing your margins. Cause if you're doing printable, I would suggest having bigger margins, but you can change both of those here. If you want, you can also change the bleed. Now, if you change it in this screen like this, it's just going to resize the pages and it's not going to resize anything in it. So let's go ahead. So if I change this to five by seven and I have my previous selected, it zoomed in anyway, you can see it made the pages smaller, but it didn't adjust any of the um, elements that I have on the pages. So if you wanted to do that because you want to manually move things around, maybe because it's half the size it was before and you're concerned that lines will be too small to write in and you know fonts are too big and all of that, you can go and manually adjust it. But we're trying to find the quickest way to do this, right? So what I prefer to do is to click adjust layout. And now you'll have to put the numbers in again. But what this is going to do is it's automatically going to adjust everything in here. It will not adjust fonts unless you say adjust fonts. And then here you can actually say minimum size. So it doesn't make that any smaller. Um, but let's go ahead and let's do that this way and see the difference of what happens. Okay, so now you can see, I, did I not have the font selected? Now you can see that it has made the pages smaller, but it's also made your whole document smaller as well. So that is definitely something that comes in very handy. You would then, of course, go through and make any adjustments that you need to make. Um, if you're concerned about the sizing, the spacing of certain things, maybe print out a copy, see what it looks like printed out. All right. So again, you know, you can go ahead, adjust what you need to adjust and then go back and check, double check everything. Don't just do it and then go. You got to make sure everything fits and it all looks the way you need it to look. So next we're talking about updating styles and you know, to be honest, this is super easy, but um, I'm going to mention it anyway. So let's go to any of these places where I have, where do I have any styles, headers? Here we go. I have a header here. So you'll see the headers here is connected to a paragraph style, right? We created a paragraph style throughout the series in the first episode of the series, which feels like a year and a half ago. So we have this here. We have this here. All you're going to do is find the object that you want to change, change what it is you want to change about it. We want to change the font and maybe we want this to be smaller maybe we want it to be a particular color whatever the case change how you want to change it right and now all you're going to do is come over to your paragraph style you're going to right click you know that little plus means that it's been changed in some way so you want to come here and redefine style and now every instance where you have a header and now I'm going to struggle to find a header, it will automatically have changed. So anything that's connected to that style. So that makes it super easy. Same thing is going to be with any other style. So do we have styles for these in here? Object style. Yeah, we have this as boxes, right? So this is boxes with our rounded corners. If I go and I say I want this to be a thicker 
let's make it really thick so we can make it very obvious i want it to have no corners that's what i want it to look like i can go right click hit redefine style and it's going to redefine everything that was connected to that now this is how it's going to work for every style which makes it really simple and really quick when you want to go back and um you know, change the way, the feel. You can do everything at one shot and look, it's changed everything because as we created this document, everything was connected to styles. This is what's so amazing about styles. Just keep in mind, you still need to scroll through and check because sometimes if you have multiple styles attached to one object, because you have object styles, cell styles, you have paragraph styles, character styles, you can have more than one style. Um, connected to one thing. Sometimes that can cause an issue with styles being applied. So if that's the case, you just want to check and make sure because um, you'll have notifications here and it will say to clear this or clear that um, depending on what other styles are on there and you may need to do that. So keep a lookout up for it. Still again, scroll through, make sure everything looks good. My suggestion is to make all the changes that you want to make and then scroll through so you're not going back and forth, back and forth, but that's totally up to you. Uh, maybe it's easier to look at one thing at a time as you're scrolling through, but just make sure you're doing that. Now, updating parent pages. This is super simple as well. You're just going to simply make the update. Again, this is separate from styles. You're at a glance. Let's look at here. I have this on every page, but like, let's say I decide, all right, I'm in my parent here. I want these to be over there and those to be over here. I want to see how we have the little guys here. I'm going to switch these around. Actually, let's just switch these up and down. I'm going to move this here, move this up, and then move this guy down here. Just moving around to show you how that works. Now, when I go to my document, I was in my planner page and I changed it. I don't need to do anything. I don't have to redefine anything. I don't have to save anything. I should, it will just make the changes. See, now we're in the document and all of my little guys are at the bottom and that's it. That's as simple as it is. Just keep in mind that if you've overridden anything here, then that is not going to update. If you, like we showed in the last one, if you overrode these because you're like, hey, I need to change these dates and maybe I'm going to, just going to change this to anything so that you can see here, right? So that's only on that page because I overrode that. That's only this page. If I come over to my parent page and I say I want to make this March, April. Yeah, I'm not spelling. That's fine. Okay. When we come back to our document, it's changed on all of these, but it hasn't changed on this page. And that's because I overrode those. So just keep in mind that that's the case. Um, so when you update your parent, scroll through any pages, you know that you have objects that have been overridden and just make sure nothing looks funky there. Only three more things to show you really quickly, but the next one is really, really cool. And this is how you can change all of your colors in your document really quickly, just at one time. Um, if you have a bunch of colors in your document, Let's see what color this is. This is pink, so we have the pink color here. If you have a bunch of colors throughout your document, and let's say you're creating a variation or you just wanna change the colors the next year, um, you don't have to go through every parent page or every individual page and do that. So let's say you have six colors that you use throughout your planner. You can change it all in a matter of two seconds. So first thing I would do is I would create color swatches for the new colors that you want. So now all you're going to do once you have your new swatches in there is you're going to come up to edit and then we're going to come down to find and change. All right. You're going to make sure you click on color over here. All right. And now we're going to find the color you want to change, which we already know is our pink swatch. This is also another reason why it's really good to keep this cleaned up. Um, these are colors in the document that I didn't create swatches for, by the way. So we're going to use change our pink here. And now we're going to change it, select which color we're going to change it to. So you would have added your new colors in here. I'm just going to pick the tan just to show you how it works. And for some reason, this is not selected down here. And uh, you really need to have it selected. 
this little button here is include parent pages. So make sure it has a little like black box around it. Um, all right. And then you can do find next and change each one and we'll go to the next one and change it. But for these purposes, I think we just want to do change all. So just hit change all and it's going to tell you it changed 206 times that pink color was used. It changed all of them to our new color. Click OK and done. And here we go. We have our new color and that's it. And you can just do that for each new color. You want to change the pink to tan. You want to change the blue to purple. You want, you know, whatever the case may be. And like seriously, in under a minute, you can change all the colors in your whole planner. Really, really awesome tool to be used. All right, so next I'm going to talk about moving pages. Again, you've already seen this throughout the series, but I just, just in case I want to mention it right now. Simply, if I want to move, um, come down here, if I want to move this page to a different area, I'm going to right click. If I, usually you're going to want to do the whole spread, so make sure you select the whole spread, um, but it's not a big deal anyway. You'll see why in a second. You're going to right click and come to move pages. So if you had only selected one, you can always manually type this in and just say one, two, two to three. And then you're going to select either after page, before page, start or end of document. So if I want to move it to the end, I can do that. Or if I want to move it after, just select the page you want to move it after and then just hit OK and that's it. That's it. Super easy. Not a whole lot to explain about that. All right, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is what I talked about earlier, which is changing images and graphics easily. If you're creating a variation to your planner, I want to go from cats to dogs, but I don't want to change everything. I'm gonna change some fonts, some colors, and I'm gonna switch out graphics. So that's super easy to do. Let's use this guy. All right. So I have this little guy here. I want him to be a cat. Now I don't have any cat PNGs, so I'm just going to change him to a different dog, but I want to just show you the example. If you want to relink him, you can come to this little chain link here, click that, and we're going to say relink. And now you can just choose whatever image you want. Let's choose a different doggy. I want to choose one where you can see how it's going to put it exactly there. All right, I'm going to I want to replace him with this dog. Let's just pretend he's a cat. We're going to say okay. And now we've gone ahead and we've replaced him and it's put him in that exact size and position and that makes it really really easy. What's even easier is that you can come over to your link documents over here. All right, and let's Let's find a page with a new guy. Okay, so I found this guy here. I'm going to want to change him out, but I want to change out all instances of him. So anytime he is in my document, I want him to change to something else. So the easiest way to do that is to come over to your links panel. And if you remember, I said that this little arrow indicates that there's more than one. So there's two of this guy in this document. And if I toggle down, it will show me you know, where they are. So if you want to change all of them, just make sure you have the main part of that group selected and then we're going to right click and then we're going to say relink all instances. And now we're going to get our box again and we can go ahead and we can select a different guy. All right, well, we'll just change them with this guy. And so we're going to change them with this poodle guy. We're changing this one here and I'm going to click OK and it's just going to add them in there. And see, it's added him in there. Now, these the transparency on here is down. It's added at the same size, the same location, the same transparency, and everything. So you can see, and it's changed it on every single one of these. Do you see how much time this could save you if you're just creating variations and you're not wanting to completely redo your whole layout? Because um, if I wanted to, if I had embedded all of these and I needed to add a new image, I would have to copy and paste the image or place the image in here. I would have to resize it to the right thing, line it up here, and then bring down the opacity. It's definitely, and then I would have to do that for all three of these instances, all three of these pages. So it's definitely a lot quicker to do it this way. And again, once you do that, it's not perfect. There might be occasions where the picture is cut off a little bit or something like that, depending on the dimensions you're working with. So still make sure you go through and make sure that you know adjustments need to be made, but super, super quick. With all of these tools in InDesign, you can quickly 
very quickly, make lots of variations of your planners and add a ton of new planners to your store in no time. Between changing the colors all at one time, changing your styles so every all of that changes at one time, um, being able to switch out your graphics all at one time, all of that is amazing. The only thing you're really going to need to do manually is if you want to actually change your layouts around. But other than that, everything else is going to be super, super quick and super easy. So I know this was a short video, but I hope that you found it helpful and that you find lots of success in your planner business. I do have one more video in this series. It's a bonus video number two or video 20 of this series, which is for those of you that plan to make physical planners yourself at home. Um, there's many, many, many advantages to making planners yourself at home, but there is one large downside. And that is having to try to figure out how to make all the different parts that make a planner. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how I create dividers and covers for my planners. I will show you laminated covers and a hard cover. And then I will show you how I make dividers using my silhouette cutters. You're definitely not going to want to miss it because I can promise you that when I was doing the research to figure out how to do this, I couldn't find anything that would pass as professional looking. And I had to figure this out on my own trial and error. And I am being silly enough to share it with you guys. So make sure if you're making your planners at home, you check out that video. And if you are not making your planners at home, I will see you in the video after because this is it. The series is over after the next one. Whew. So good luck to you guys. I hope you make lots of money. Please leave notes in the comments and let me know how you guys do. And good luck to you and I will see you in the next one.